The world's 11th largest economy with a per capita GNI of 30,000 US dollars, Korea. And its high energy capital, Seoul, moves at a pace that rivals the world's busiest with its pulsing creative energy and innovation. The chamber is here in Seoul, the thriving capital of the country, offering comprehensive coverage of the nation's economic issues. I'm your host, Panita Bajaj. Every week, the chamber will discuss major economic issues with top experts. This week on the show, we discuss re-denomination with panelist Todd Sample and special guest Kim Se-won, professor of economics at Iwa Women's University. So for those of you curious about Korea and what goes on around the world, we are here in Seoul, the economic hub of Northeast Asia. So without further ado, let's step into the chamber. Professor Kim Se-won, thank you for joining us once again, and Todd as well. It's been quite some time since we first met. Uh, today we're going to be talking about re-denomination, and what I've heard it is the process of changing the face value of banknotes and coins that is in the circulating currency. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Can you share a little bit more detail of what re-denomination is? The re-denomination is uh, decreasing the uh, face value of Korean won by uh, one thousandth. So technically speaking, it is deleting the last three digits in all price tags. When we pay for goods and services, the size of the money uh, for paying decreases by one thousandth. Also, the salaries that we are receiving by selling our labor decreases by the same rate. Right. For me, as just a consumer, it seems, well, that's easy. Just delete mm -hmm. the last three zeros, and it mm -hmm. seems like a fairly easy process. Mm -hmm. However, I'm sure that there is many more steps along the way. Uh, the Bank of Korea Governor Lee ju yeol and mm -hmm. Finance Minister Hong nam gi announced the government is not considering currency redenomination because, well, it's... Uh, a hefty topic. It's a mm -hmm. long process and right. probably much more, but it's still a hot topic right. among the political circles. Right. So, as you said, uh, the discussion on redenomination has been started from political circle. So that's the reason I think why quite a few people mis misunderstand and suspect real purpose of the redenomination. So I think there should be active communication between Congress and general public and governments for uh, carrying out a redenomination in the future. Sure, sure. So Korea, of course, has undertaken currency reforms twice before. Right. So I'm curious, what kind of changes did those reforms uh, result in? So as you said, Todd, there were two times of redenomination in Korean history. The first one was in 1953 and to finance uh, the huge uh, war, Korean war expenses. Mm -hmm. So Korean government printed too much money and there was high inflation. Mm -hmm. So Korean government wanted to control that high inflation, but it was not actually successful in doing that. The second redenomination was carried out in 1962 by President Park. Mm -hmm. he, he really wanted to increase the savings of the nation because he wanted to uh, lend out more money to corporations. Mm -hmm. So he actually brought out the money circulating in underground economy to the bright side, open uh, financial market. And he was uh, pretty successful in doing that. And, and by doing that, uh, Korean government collected more tax from uh, that uh, bright side money. It seems like the effectiveness of redenomination highly depends on you know, our country's 
effectiveness, our government's um, effectiveness and political stability and you know, social consensus and things right. like that. Right. I'm so glad that you raised that issue, Punita, actually. Without a uh, very strong social consensus, we can't and government can't carry out the redenomination. So for that purpose, uh, Korean government has to build up uh, strong credibility mm -hmm. to, to private sector and general public. So I think, again, the, the most fundamental precondition for uh, redenomination should be social consensus, particularly between general publics and governments. Mm -hmm. And the change is more gradual, exactly, right? Exactly. Right, gradual changes. It's not something that happens right. overnight. Right. Um, some predict that it'll take eight years, mm -hmm. maybe even a decade for this whole process to go through. And then, as mm -hmm. you said, for us to get used to mm -hmm. seeing those prices, using right. those prices right. and things like that. How much do you think that will actually cost for this redenomination to take place? So related to that question, we have uh, official estimate of the Bank of Korea, the central bank in 2004. So in that report, they are saying that the total cost of the redenomination would be about 2.4 billion US dollars as of 2004. So that includes only direct cost of redenomination like printing new money, upgrading a settlement system in banks, and then changing ATMs. But in today's price level, as of 2019, it's gonna be 3.6 billion US dollars. But I have to say that that doesn't include indirect cost of the redenomination, like upgrading all the menus in the restaurants, upgrading all the price tags in department store. So if we include all indirect and direct cost of the redenomination, that would be over uh, 10 billion US dollars in total. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Uh, as we talked about, the credibility of the Korean government is the most important factor, or I would say social consensus between citizens and the government. So without that, it, it could be very difficult to carry out the redenomination because there would be lots of rumors and lots of fake news that generates a really unstable social and economic situation. So for successful redenomination, we have to avoid that kind of uh, unstable situation, yes. Well, speaking of disadvantages, I think one of the main concerns would be inflation once right, again. Right. So is that the reason why this idea was scrapped back in 2004? There, I think there could be two reasons for uh, concerns of uh, inflation pressure after redenomination. The first is rounding off the decimal numbers, which is, which is kind of a tricky concept to understand. But if I make an example with it, Suppose a cup of coffee in Starbucks is like 4,800 won. Mm -hmm. After redenomination, the price of it becomes 4.8 won. Mm -hmm. Then as time goes by, people begin to ignore the, the, the decimal number of 0.8. Mm -hmm. Then the Starbucks will increase the price of the star, uh, of cup of coffee up to five from 4.8. So naturally that happens in all goods and services. So that means the price level increase altogether. Right. Why don't we just act like a good world and round down? You know, <laughs> wouldn't yeah, that that's, be that's a great idea, but seller never do that. Right. Yeah. However, are there other disadvantages? Maybe when it comes to um, foreign goods or right. just foreign currency and things like that you briefly mentioned. Well, some disadvantages expected after redenomination is people's confusion and inconvenience. Uh, in buying and selling goods and services. So it is something like a situation that we are traveling out of the country. In, in foreign countries, when we buy uh, whatever, apple and milk, we have to recalculate it, the price of it in terms of the domestic currency. So that kind of situation goes on for a while. So that, is a, that might be a big cost to everyone and because people will be confused about the decision of purchasing goods and services. Mm -hmm. Interesting point. Were there other countries that were successful or other countries that were unsuccessful with this? Well, they were actually particularly successful in controlling high inflation of early 2000s after redenomination. But recently, the Venezuela and Zimbabwe carried out the redenomination for controlling super high inflation, like over 1 million percent of the inflation every month, not year. So 
they were not unfortunately successful because their economy has something fundamental problem in, in, in many different aspects. All right. Well, let's actually take a look at uh, the different consequences when it comes to different countries of this redenomination process. Redenomination is when a country simplifies its currency, essentially by reducing the number of zeros without lowering its real value. And won redenomination has recently become a hot issue in Korea again. Some 11 countries have redenominated their currencies, mostly due to inflation. Some countries have experienced bitter failure. But Turkey's redenomination is a great success story. Turkey redenominated in 2005 after suffering from persistently high inflation in the last three decades of the 20th century. The removal of six zeros from its currency was undertaken step by step from 1998. Thanks to those thorough preparations, Turkey managed to stabilize prices and showed the way forward for other countries contemplating redenomination. France also successfully redenominated the franc in 1960. Again, the key to success was the pace of implementation. It did not put a time limit on the exchange of old bills. There are, however, countries that failed in their redenomination. Zimbabwe, unfortunately, is one of them. The Zimbabwean dollar has been redenominated three times, in 2006, 2008, and 2009, in an attempt to stabilize its super high inflation rate, which reached almost 20 million percent. Another example is Venezuela. The country first redenominated its national currency, the Bolivar, in 2008, removing three zeros, and then another five zeros lopped off to rescue a downward spiraling economy. But the results, inflation went even higher, and this year is forecast to top 10 million percent. While poverty is reaching unprecedented levels and social unrest is on the rise. The real impact of redenomination is still an ongoing debate. Many countries have succeeded, but many have failed as well. With the stakes so high, past cases will have to be studied thoroughly to make it a success for Korea. Let me show you the picture of the Zimbabwe's money, which is 100 trillion uh, Zimbabwe dollars. One uh, trillion. 100, 100. 100 trillion, not, oh not one trillion. So this is the largest dominated paper money circulating in the world uh, right now. So the people's impression in international world is if we have too many zeros in domestic currency, that doesn't look pretty. That means that is a symbol of weak economy and unstable economy. Right, is that true though? Is it the more zeros there are, the lower face value it has? Exactly, okay. exactly. So what do you think about the real value of 100 trillion uh, Zimbabwe dollars? Thinking of what we can buy for maybe a loaf of bread or a gallon of milk, something <laughs> exactly. like that. You can buy like three eggs. So, three eggs, wow. Right, so, <laughs> so I would say the real value of 100 trillion Zimbabwe dollar would be one US dollar or 1,000 Korean oh, wow. won. Wow. So, Otherwise, if you just say that, those are three expensive eggs. Right. <laughs> 100 trillion right. dollars. So that's the international impression on, on each, each country's domestic currency's uh, face value. I think the most dramatic case of the redenomination is Turkey's case in, in, in 2006. <coughs> so some Korean people still remember how much they exchanged into Turkish lira against Korean won before 2006. Like uh, 10,000 won uh, was like 13 million uh, Turkish lira before 2006. But it is now the same amount of money, 10,000 won, Korean won is like uh, 51 lira. Mm. So 
I think the Turkey's redenomination of 2006 is very successful case of redenomination in, in recent history. Right. Well, then what kind of benefits can we see? What kind of advantages are there if we go through with this redenomination process? Many people talk about, you know, hardware and software. Mm -hmm. what, right. What is that all about? Well, regarding the hardware, it is about the position of the Korean economy in global world and the size of the Korean economy which is represented by GDP is like 12th largest in the world, uh, slightly larger than Spain and Italy. And in terms of the trading size, it is eighth largest country in the world. And, uh, and uh, South Korea's uh, foreign reserve holding is one of the largest in the world. So that is about the uh, hardware of the Korean economy. But on the other side, about the software of the Korean economy, we know that the way of doing business and th the way of uh, clearing out the conflicts between different parties, particularly between private sector and government, depends pretty much on tradition. So we, we believe that by, by implementing redenomination, we can update, upgrade the, the software of the Korean economy by, by decreasing uh, underground economy size. Right. Thank you very much, Professor Kim and Todd, for being Thank on you. the show. Uh, we talked about Korea's redenomination that is still an ongoing debate with a lot of disadvantages and advantages that will you know, still be in the matter. Well, that's all for today. If you have any questions, feel free to join us on social media, and we hope to answer your economic inquiries there. Again, thank you for joining us, and thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time, same time, same place, on The Chamber. private public cooperation to maintain Korea's lead in the semiconductor industry. The government plans to focus on fostering the industries of non-memory semiconductors. One of them was system semiconductors.